Okay, in this section we're going to look at solving linear equations that specifically have decimals in the equation or in the solution. So our learning goal is still focusing on understanding how to solve linear equations. We're just going to do a little bit of extra work this time um, working with decimals in our equations. So when you think about it, exact answers are not always practical. So what I mean by exact answers are fractions. For example, how much is 37 fifths? I don't really have a good sense of what that number means, so sometimes it's helpful to turn an answer into a decimal or round a decimal to help our answers make more sense. So let's just begin with a quick little example here. We have the equation 38x minus 39 equals 118. So if I was going to solve this equation, I can see that I don't have any um, I don't have any parentheses, so I don't need to distribute. I don't have to combine like terms, so I can go right into using SADMET. Let's figure out what I'm writing on the screen here. I can go right into using SADMET to undo the operations that I see. So obviously I see subtraction, so I'm going to undo that by adding 39 to both sides. So that leaves me with negative 38x equals, uh, let's see, that's going to be 157. Now I would undo this multiplication with division. So we would divide both sides by negative 38. And we would end up with x equals negative 157 divided by 38. Well, like I said, I don't have a real good sense for what that number is in its exact form. I'm not even sure if I can reduce it. Probably not. But I could turn this number into a decimal by using my calculator. So using my calculator, I would just type in 157 divided by 38. You can see that's equal to a very long decimal, 4.13157, blah, 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 blah. If I rounded it, let's say, to the hundredths place, that would be about negative 4.13. And that gives me a better idea about the size of my answer, than much better than negative 157 over 38. So that's what we're going to focus on in this lesson, is practice using um, a calculator and rounding our answers. We're also going to practice setting up equations with decimals in them and thinking about what kinds of answers make sense. So, sometimes the equation itself will have decimals in it. We're still going to follow the rules as usual. Here we have 3.5x minus 37.9 equals 0.2x. Now, do I need to distribute? No. Do I need to combine like terms on the left? No. Not on the right either, but I can move my variables. I notice that 0.2x is smaller than 3.5x, so I'm going to start by moving that term. So we're going to do that by subtracting 0.2x from both sides. If I line it up nicely so that my decimals align, it's easier to do. We don't have to pull out our calculator. 5 minus 2 is 3, 3 minus 0 is 3, and our decimal lines up, so that's 3.3x minus 37.9. But what's left over here on the right? 0.2x minus 0.2x is 0. There's something there, and it's 0, right? So now I've moved my variable. I'm going to undo the rest of the operations using SADMEP. So first I'll undo that subtraction that I see. I'll undo the subtraction by adding 37.9 to both sides. And that's going to leave me with 3.3x equals 37.9. Now I can undo the multiplication that I see, 3.3 times x. So we'll divide both sides by 3.3. 3. 
And, hmm, I'm not entirely sure what 37.9 divided by 3.3 .3 is. I could get an idea. For example, I know 36 divided by 9 is 12, so it's probably somewhere around 12. Um, but I'm totally okay with you guys using your calculator to do this decimal division. Okay, so we'll pull up our calculator again, clear it out, and then we'll do 37.9 divided by 3.3. .3. And we get this really big long decimal answer again. I told you it was somewhere around 12. It's 11.48484848. And if I round that to the hundredths, again, that would be 11.48. If I rounded it to the tenths, I would say x is about 11.5. Actually, here's an important um, item here. When we are rounding, when we're not giving a decimal answer, we really should use this approximately symbol. The symbol that kind of looks like equals but it's squiggly means x is approximately that value. It tells the reader that you're rounding a little bit when you get your solution. Okay? All right. So, like we talked about before, rounding is often necessary to get a practical answer make the answer make sense to us. And this is especially true when we're working with word problems. So let's do it. Three people want to share equally in the cost of a pizza. The pizza costs $12.99. What, what is each person's share? So now let's go back, underline and annotate. Obviously we have three people. Think about what this word share means in this case. They want to share equally the cost of the pizza. That means we're going to do some division. I know the pizza costs $12.89, so I'm going to put that in here as well. $12.89, but what I don't know is what is each person's share of the pizza, right? So, I know that if X represents one person's share Um, I could set up this equation a couple different ways. The one that's most obvious to me is to say that one person's share, x, is going to equal the entire cost of the pizza, $12.89, divided by 3. That just gives you the operation to do. Another way of representing it is to say 3 times each person's share is going to be the total cost of the pizza. But of course here we would still end up dividing both sides of the equation by 3 and that would still leave us with this calculation of x equals 12.89 divided by 3. Now again I don't know it exactly what that is but I know it's about 4. It's a little bit more than 4 because 12 divided by 3 is 4. And so let's pull up our calculator and do the math here. 12.89 divided by 3. Let's see what that is. It's 4.296666666. Repeating. So if we wrote that down, 4.296666. Repeating. Well, that's not very helpful. And we're talking about dollars and cents here, right? So it makes more sense to round to the hundreds place and say that x is about four dollars and thirty cents. We're not going to say that each person has to pay four point two nine six 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 dollars. We're going to say that each person has to pay four dollars and thirty cents. All right. So another thing to look for when working with decimals is problems that involve percents. So remember, when you're working with problems that involve percents, please turn them into decimals before performing any operations with them. So, here's an example. If you buy a sweatshirt for a total cost of $20, the total cost includes the price of the sweatshirt and a 5% sales tax, what is the price of the sweatshirt? So, let's go in here. We're going to buy a sweatshirt. That's probably important. Ooh, total cost of $20. That's telling me something equals 20 the total cost includes the price of the sweatshirt 
and a 5% sales tax. So I'm going to go in my annotations and write that as 0 0.05. And we're trying to figure out what is the price of the sweatshirt. So when I define my variable, I'm going to let x equal that thing that we want to know, the price of the sweatshirt. And now let's go back and put this back in here. The total cost includes the price of the sweatshirt. So that was x. Ooh, and that tells me something, doesn't it? It's the price of the sweatshirt plus 5% sales tax. Now the way that sales tax works, it's 5% of the item you buy. So 5% of, of means multiply. So that's going to be 5% times the item that I bought. Well, that cost x dollars. Now we have everything we need. My equation is going to be the price of the sweatshirt plus 5% tax, so 5% of the price of the sweatshirt, and that total is going to equal $20. Now we just follow our rules for solving. I don't need to distribute, but I do need to combine like terms. I have two variable terms on the left here. Remember that x is really 1x. And 1 plus 0 0.05 is 1.05. So I'm going to set this up as 1.05x equals $20. Now this is multiplication that we see here. And of course to undo multiplication, we will divide both sides by 1.05. Alrighty, now it's time to pull up our little calculator. We're going to do 20 divided by 1.05. And again, that gives me 19.0476. And even there, I'm rounding. So 19.0476. So let's think about what makes sense here. The price of the sweatshirt is approximately... $19.05. Remember to answer the question. The original price of the sweatshirt was about $19.05. And then we added on the 5% sales tax. Okay, so that's it for the examples. Um, please feel comfortable to use a calculator, but you should only be using a calculator when you absolutely have to. That means multiplying or dividing um, any weird fractions to get them as a decimal or to multiply or divide any decimal values. I really feel like you should be able to add and subtract your decimals, so try not to use your calculator in those instances. Okay? So, um, go back, put in your summary, put in your left-hand column questions, and we'll practice this when we get to class.